G'day all, and welcome to my first tutorial in C Sharp Windows 8 development. So we're going to be concentrating on Windows 8 and Windows RT. Really, really exciting new technology. And for these toots, I'm going to do something a little different. I thought it might be beneficial if uh, I just sort of code uh, whole projects from start to finish and just narrate as I go. I think that the most difficult thing about software development is uh, actually just managing to to make something you know from start to finish so yeah I thought I might do that for this shoot and um, I'm using VirtualBox here this is uh, well let's have a bit of a look this is the Enterprise Evaluation Edition this is the um, developers version of Windows 8 and you can download this from the Microsoft website but it only lasts a little while so I've got 72 days left here uh, before I'll have to buy a copy of Windows 8, but that's going to be pretty good anyway. I'm pretty keen to update. Uh, anyway, you also need the Visual Studio Express for Windows 8. This is not the desktop version. This is uh, the version for Windows 8. And the desktop version you can run in Windows 7, but uh, the Windows 8 version you do need Windows 8. So this is for making your uh, Metro-style apps, or whatever they call them nowadays. I think they've steered away from the term Metro, but... Yeah, the the desktop version is, is different from the version that we're going to be using here. So this is really, really a uh, big, big update. And uh, I'm actually really, really impressed by the things that have happened in the new version of uh, Visual Studio. But we'll go through them as we uh, come up against them. Anyway, Windows 8 is really exciting. And for me, anyway, one of the most exciting things is just how easy it is to code something that works both on desktop PCs running Windows 8, uh, but also you know, your uh, tablet PCs running Windows RT. It's basically just a few clicks and you can compile, you know, something that runs on these tablet computers just as well as it runs on the desktop PCs. So that's what we're going to be doing. I thought maybe for the first project we'd start out nice and simple and just make a basic calculator. But we will go from start to finish and you'll see everything that I do. And hopefully, hopefully it'll all go well. But i got to say, I'm new to this sort of, you know, Visual Studio 2012, so um, I'll probably I'll probably hiccup and fall sometimes, but just forgive me. All good. Okay, well let's get started. Really, so what we want to do is build a little desktop calculator for Windows 8 and Windows RT that we could put on the Windows Store or the Microsoft Store, and it's going to be pretty simple, really. But we'll go uh, C sharp, so uh, new project. And this is one of the really cool things. Actually, you probably hear me say, um, you know, all of the all of the times, all of the things that I'm impressed with the new version of uh, Visual Studio. I'm gonna, you know, say that I love them and, and say it's really cool. Anyway, um, we want a Visual C Sharp project. But the thing that, the thing that I think is really cool about this new uh, version of Visual Studio Express is that. Like the pro versions of previous Visual Studio, say the 2010, uh, you get all of your languages at once. So that's really cool. Uh, instead of having to download Visual C Sharp Express and then Visual C++ Express, we get them all at once. Uh, anyway, if you select C Sharp and Windows Store, and what we're going to want, I think, uh, blank, blank app, XAML, X-A-M-L. So we're going to go through um, programming a bit of XAML and we'll use a blank app for this little calculator. So I might just call it Calculator Yeah, and click OK. Alrighty, so Visual Studio is going to build that for us. OK, and here we are in uh, yeah, in our new app. So some of the changes, or one of the things that I was particularly impressed by is the black background. I don't know about you guys, but I get really, really tired of looking at um, bright white screen all the time. It's really strenuous on your eyes, so I'm loving this. This is great. These dark pastels on a black background. Really, really cool. Um, anyway, what have we got here? This is the... This is the app class. Yeah, that's our app class. So, let's have a bit of a look over the side and see what we've got. Uh, we've got properties with assemblyinfo.cs uh, References uh, it's interesting, but this version of Visual Studio includes uh, all of the standard references automatically, so you don't have to go through the um, 
you know, you just have to right click on uh, on your solution and you would say, you know, add references and then choose whatever Microsoft references you need. Well, this version, uh, 2012, actually includes all of those references for you. So all you've got to do is add the using declarations at the top of your files. Anyway, that's references. So assets, what have we got for assets? So there's a few logos and things. So these are the sorts of things that flash up on the screen when you run your app. Uh, if you're used to using Windows 8, you'll have seen that it's got some fancy uh, transition graphics. When you first run an application, it sort of spins around a bit and it does a little dance and it shows you little pictures and things while it's loading. Uh, so that's what these are. Um, logo, I think that's the um, tile image or the icon image that appears on your uh, start screen. Splash screen, that's the logo that comes up when you uh, first run the app. Store logo, that's obviously what appears in the store for your app. Anyway, what else have we got? Uh, standard styles are stored here in the common directory. So that's a XAML file. We're going to go into XAML a lot, I think, but uh, it's it's basically the, uh, the new way of specifying um, styles and uh, what 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 would you say? It's uh, it's it's the form designer. The form designer now is is uh, this new XML style language called XAML. It's really really cool too. Um, so app dot XAML. That's the uh, main class. Yeah. So that's got a few global things there, and we've also got the main class file, which has probably got the run event in it somewhere. Where are we? Root frame. Yeah, that'll be it there. So navigate to the main page. So main page is actually the first XAML page of our uh, app. We'll get to that in a second. We don't need that key for the time being. But main page dot XAML. If we double click on that, uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the new Windows form designer basically, and this one is just a thousand, a thousand percent better uh, than the old Windows form designer. I'm was a big fan of the original Windows form designer, but this is so much easier. Uh, so basically we get two sort of screens. We get the top part, which is a visual representation of what we're designing. And we also get at the same time, uh, underneath, the actual XAML code. So this is the XML based language that we're going to use to define where all of our controls are and, um, you know, it defines the events and things that happen uh, when the controls are clicked or whatever. And over the side we've got our toolbox which has got basically all of the same things as the original Windows form designer had in Visual Studio 2012. Uh, only you should see what these things can do. It's unbelievable. Uh, anyway, the final file down there is the package manifest. So that's uh, just got you know a bunch of random settings and things that the store and that needs to know about our application. But basically we're going to be sticking to uh, mainpage.xaml and mainpage.cs. So this is the um, C sharp code file that's linked to that main page.xaml. Alrighty, so we want to make a little calculator. What we might do is um, add some buttons. So the first thing we want to do is uh, I like to select all XAML controls over here in the toolbox. Uh, you can find button in the common controls, but all, all controls is good. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to add a button. There it is. Just resize it a bit bigger. And oh, you can zoom in and out too. So just hold down control and scroll your mouse and you can zoom in and out of the uh, form designer. Yeah, you couldn't do that in Visual Studio 2010. Uh, anyway, those graphics are way too small. But as soon as you put down a, um, a control, you'll see the uh, code for it appear in the uh, actual XAML code editor. So we're going to make a few of these buttons, but I might just set this one here up to be uh, exactly the way that I want it. So where is the properties to this thing? Um, ah, it's there. Okay, so you click on the little spanner to get your, your button's properties up. So we select the button. Uh, no name is good. Appearance is pretty good. What I want to do is actually change the font size. So where's that going to be? Brush. No. No. Text, maybe? 
Yeah, there it is. So 14.67, that's nowhere near big enough. I like just great big graphics. Yeah, that's pretty good. Actually, you know what? I might go even further. We've got a 48. I might type a 0 on there. Oops. Put an extra enter symbol in. Um, okay, so these are going to be the digit buttons for our calculator. And what I used to do in uh, Visual Studio 2010, and I can't do it here, so uh, I've had to change my ways. Uh, but if you click over here on the lightning bolt, you get the events. So this is the things that you want to trap when the user interacts with the button in some way. And uh, it was basically this click event here that we want to uh, add. But uh, instead of adding you know, one separate click event for the zero button, adding another click event for the one button, what I'm actually going to do is uh, add a single click event that captures all of the buttons. Because it's the same thing that happens every time. So um, we're going to add a whole heap of new buttons. And I'm going to do that in the XAML code, since it's much easier. Now if we just select that line that's got the button on it, and we hit paste 10 times, or 9 times actually. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, Okay, so now we've got 10 buttons uh, all on top of each other, and they're right there. They've all got zero at the moment, so that's the content attribute right here in XAML. So if you select that and we change it to the other digits, uh, there we go. Now we've got 10 buttons, and they've all got different digits on them. And we want also to change the names of them, so I might just come back here to the start and say name equals uh, btn0 okay so I'm going to call mine um, each of my buttons you know btn and then something zero I might actually just copy that and paste and paste and paste 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 paste, paste. And call that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Alrighty, folks. So I've got ten buttons. Uh, they've each got a digit written on them, and they're each called BTN zero through to uh, nine. At the moment, they're all on top of each other. So let me just move this down a bit, and we'll shift them around a bit so that they're not on top of each other. Whoa! Zoomed in too much. Okay, that's the 9, that's the 8, that's the 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the 0. Okay, I might just put them down in the corner. Uh, if you've ever looked at a calculator, they seem to do something like this. We'll uh, put the 9 digits all in a, a little grid, a little 3x3 three three grid, and we'll have the 0 digit to the bottom left. Just like that. Like that. 5. Let's make 6. And 7. And 8 and 9. Okay, that's pretty good. So the next thing that we've got to do is actually add an event that reads um, the digit that the user has clicked. So when, when the user clicks or, or pushes with their finger or presses with their finger on one of these digits here, we want actually to capture that. Uh, I'm going to add a text block right here to stretch it out a bit. And we'll change the font size if I can figure out where it is. <laughs> I might actually call this TXT output as well. Change the name to TXT output. And the font size will make 48. Good stuff. I might change the contents too. We don't need anything in there. Yeah, I'm a bit confused over what which item's text is called text and which items, like the buttons, have their text called content. Yeah, I'm a bit confused. I think I'll get used to it, but it, they used to always be called text in Visual Studio 2010, but 
seems to be changed. Anyway, basically, when the user clicks on one of these digit buttons, what we want to happen for this first little toot is... Um, oh, I think it's frozen. No, that's all good. Uh, we want the digit to go into this text box here so that they can type out a number. And I think we'll probably call that a day after that, but let's see how we do that. So, uh, what I used to do is uh, just type an event into here on the click, whatever I wanted to say, something like BTN digit click. And then I would select this one and paste the same event in there. Then I would select this one and paste the same event in there. But the, the problem with doing that in Visual Studio 2012 is that each time you paste an event into this um, event handler just here in the properties box, it takes you to the code. Uh, so that's no good. So what I might do is just add one event and then we'll copy and paste the rest in XAML. So I think it, it's it's really set up to use your, both your visual side and your XAML side at once. And uh, I'm loving it. I think it's much easier. Anyway, btn digit click is the name of my event. And there we go. So Visual Studio writes that event handler for you and it takes you straight there in the code which is pretty cool so long as you don't want to do a whole bunch of them at once. I'm just going to select that and hit Control C for copy then we come back to XAML and instead of selecting this button here and pasting that event that I just copied into click uh, we don't want to do that because that's going to take us straight to code. What we want to do is uh, come to our XAML once again for the buttons and we'll see somewhere this one. Okay, so that's the uh, click event that Visual Studio attached to the zero button. We want to copy that and paste it into each of these other digits. It's a second. Get out of here. I think that's ten. Yeah, that's probably about 10. Um, okay, so all we've done is uh, we've made it so that as soon as the user clicks on any of these buttons, it's going to take us straight to the same event in C Sharp. So I'll just double click on one of those and go to that event. Uh, this is the one here. So what we want to say is txt output dot text plus equals um, button and sender. This is the uh, button that they clicked on. That's sender and content. Uh, yeah, something like that. So that might actually be an object. Yes, it is too. So we might just add a cast there. We know that it's a string. The uh, content of a button is a string, so we can just cast that. And this is actually going to, uh, hopefully anyway, let's just run it. This is actually going to add the text to the digit button that we click to the output. So let's have a look. Five, Two, three, nine, seven. Yeah, good. Okay, so we've got kind of not a calculator, but we've got something that we can just type in numbers to, and this is going to be a calculator real soon, my friends. Anyway, to close an application, it's pretty weird, but you grab the top of it and drag it down to the bottom of the screen. See you later, bro. Okay, so that's uh, just a little adventure into C Sharp. Hopefully next time we can go a bit further with this calculator and uh, maybe in, you know, three shoots or so we can get through the entire app and uh, move on to something a little more exciting. But this is, you know, a really, really cool IDE and uh, I hope this sort of tutorial is beneficial to folks and uh, thank you very much for listening. See ya.